Fresh new details are out on the genetic modifications, abilities, implementation, balancing, and an official release date for the biotech expansion. Over 200 genes will be obtainable, giving various abilities like fire breathing, fur skin, jumping, addiction immunity, and much more. This includes variations on heritability based on germlines and exenogenetics. To genetically modify your pawns, you're going to need small gene-contained capsules known as gene packs. You can acquire gene packs through three methods, trading, quests, or extraction from unfortunate hosts. Each extraction of genetic material produces a random mix of the victim's germline and exenogenes. You can mix several of these gene packs together to form an implantable organ called a xenogerm. After a successful implantation, a human immediately gains traits associated with the contained genes. One thing I am curious is how the traits are determined when you extract them and if this is kind of an RNG system for if you get good xenogenes or not. Germlines seem to be cosmetic, but maybe there's also some really good germline genes that you can get. The devs gave us a sneak peek at a dozen of these genes, so let's take a look at a few of them and discern what we can. Fire spew has to be the coolest one we have seen to date. It allows a pawn to vomit flesh flammable bile that can ignite people, surfaces, and objects. On the functional side, ageless causes the pawns who never change their biological age and never sleep makes pawns, well, you know, not need sleep. Both seem very good. Psychite addict immune is another functional gene that has the perfect synergy with drug colonies as it makes you immune to psychic-based drug addictions from drugs like yayo or crack. You still have the potential to overdose, but removing the addiction chance makes substances like go juice and wake up insanely powerful. Another interesting one is strong stomach which prevents food poisoning. This is probably useless late game but this could be really useful for tribal starts or naked brutality runs. Fur skin is another functional gene that makes you more resilient to cold and we all know a certain community that's getting a bit too excited about this one. On the combat spectrum we got some insanely strong genes to look at. Great shooting is a gene that gives a straight plus eight shooting buff which is nuts. Nothing more to say about this one just top tier. Robust is a gene that toughens up the pawn and reduces injuries. It didn't give us many details details here, so I'm very curious on how this gets implemented into the damage roll. Does the pawn take reduced damage via altering the roll, or does it apply after damage is dealt to reduce the injury severity? It could even be a roll system that has a chance to negate or reduce the injury by half the amount, similar to a hit chance. I can't wait to see how this gets implemented, as it could open up more combat variables and give us a bit more depth. And last, but possibly the most interesting, long jump legs. Long jump legs allows the pawn to jump long distances. At face value, this seems pretty straightforward forward but I'm really interested to see how the mechanic interacts here and if we'll have a jump mechanic in the future. Does this function like a short range jetpack or does this just mean that you can close a distance on an attack order quicker for melee attacks? This really could set a precedent for pawn movement dynamics going into the future and I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on it. So now the big question how are all these genes going to be balanced or is this just going to make it strictly stronger than the base game? It appears that balance will be based on the metabolic efficiency of the pawn. I did see that there looked like a few other variables in the one snapshot they gave us but right now that's what we're going off of. This means that the beneficial genes will require the pawn to consume more food while genes that confer a negative effect will increase the time between meals. I'm not sure if this is a zero-sum game or not which is important because I'm curious if you could make a pawn with a bunch of negative traits that pretty much never needs to eat. It also looks like there's a max number of genetic points you can get known as the complexity. This is a number out of 10 but with the limited information we have I'm going to assume it indicates a total sum of genes based on their point modifier. I'm not sure if you can improve this or change this with traits, so it'll be something that we'll have to look at when we get more information. Another balance gate that's imposed is that the high-end genes require archite capsules, which are small containers that are produced by Arcotex. Whether this is a loot-based reward system is yet to be seen, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that you have to raid an Arcotex lair to get these. Some genes can be passed on to children, and these are known as germline genes. The other type of gene is the xenogene, which are presumably higher-end genes that require specific implantation. One neat feature in this expansion is that you can customize your own starting genes in the game setup. I really like this because it kind of gives you a different way to play the game each time and I'm sure they'll give you a starting pool of genes that's probably limited and doesn't include the super overpowered ones but even if it did maybe if they're balanced well enough it's not a make or break for your starting scenario. And on our last note the release date was announced for October 21st. Anyways thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you want to see more content in the future.